can you know that Jesus will be coming and you will be cheating in your business? It's not possible. How can you know that Jesus is coming and you are selling fake parts to people as if it is genuine? How can you know that Jesus is coming and you owe people and you have money to pay and you will not pay? It's because you are not looking for his coming. He's saying here that the blessed hope of his coming purifies us. You will not lie to your wife. You will not lie to your husband. You cannot have a concubine behind and pose as if and still call your wife Dali. When you know in your heart is not, she is not Dali, <laughs> there is another Dali in the market that you go to in the night, that you text in the night. So this hope, blessed hope, it purifies us. Let me show you another thing that it does. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, chapter 5, verse 23. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. He said, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto who? Unto what? The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that called you who will also do it. Do what? Sanctify. It sanctifies us. If you are really expecting his coming, it sanctifies your, you as a believer. When you are looking for that, you live in the, in, in, with hope, expecting the coming of Christ. Any moment, it sanctifies you. You will be separate from the world in your dressing, in everything that you do. Your attitude to money. You will not be watching what people are watching on the website. I've caught some of our youths on the, on the Facebook. Some of the rotten things they write there. I say, come. Did I teach you this? Did your mother and father teach you this? It's because they are not living in the, with the expect, expectancy that the Lord may come any time. You know when you go for exams and they say we will dictate to you the exam that you take one hour they say we will finish now in 15 minutes. Just go and pay 2,000, 2,000 to somebody in that corner. Ah! If you are doing an exam and Jesus comes in, come. <laughs> eh? will you eat paper in heaven? Foolish people. There was one of our brothers that made all his papers. I said, ah, ah, you are so bright, oh. He came to show me that I should rejoice with him. I said, this is wonderful. I didn't know that you are very bright like this. So I just did a little examination. I said, where did you sit for this, for this exam? <laughs> tell me what actually happened there. Then his eyes dropped. I said, tell me. He said, actually, when we got there, they just told, told everybody that all oh, you this SU, uh, if you don't come co uh, cooperate with us, once we finish dictating, we will stop you too. So, whatever you cover, that's your own lot. <laughs> I say, and you can't stand out and say, we will tell, uh, we will report to the authority. If you want to cheat, cheat, but let me use the number of hours. You know, these wicked people, they are very, very wicked. You have, have to stand out. They can't kill you. If they even kill you for, the right, for doing the righteous thing, it's still okay. So he said they warned us. And, and I saw they were dictating. They were telling people to pay. Majority of people pay. They said because those few people that did not pay, we don't want you to report us. We just, we just help you. Don't worry. We'll patch you along. So he was painting. Number one is A. 
Number two is C. Number two. <laughs> I said, this is how you get your certificate. He said, eh, that's how the thing works. I said, what shall we do now? So he was crying. I said, don't cry. You know what we will do? We will tear this certificate. You will go and start all over. God has his own plan for you. Let him guide you into your plan. You cannot lead yourself into God's plan. This is Mago Mago. God loves you. His way is better than your own way. You will destroy, self, destroy yourself by doing this. Thank God he has the courage to do it. He thought it in my face with tears. I said, go and enroll. Don't go to the bush. <laughs> Where they will dictate to you. Walk down or can you lose in bush? Why not stay in the town? You know good centers now. Where they will not dictate, go there. And thank God. He's finishing his university this year. Education. So he went back. I said, work hard. You know, what is the essence of having a certificate? You know, somebody that is expecting the coming of Christ cannot live like that. You can't. Many of us are living as if Jesus is not coming back again. That's our problem. So when you, are, you know the Lord is coming, it changes, it separates you from the world. Look at first, the book of James. Chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. The husbandman, that's Jesus, waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until it receives, he receives the early. And the latter end. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. You see, when the coming of Christ grieves our heart, it will produce patience in us and endure us in the midst of trials. That's the third point. If you have no job, unemployed, you'll be patient. You will endure. Your husband divorces you, you will endure. All the trials that you can ever imagine, you will patiently bear it. Because you know that when he comes, Everything will be over. Number four. First Corinthians chapter 15. The coming of Christ affects us so deeply when it takes grip within our spirit. This is why what the church, one of the things that is missing in the church today, why many Christians are just living carelessly. First Corinthians 15. When you start from 51, behold, I show you a mystery which shall not all sleep, but which shall all be changed. He's talking about rapture. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, the whole chapter is talking about rapture. If you don't believe in the rapture, then you don't believe in First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery which shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, that's how the rapture will take place. When nobody expects, just moment, twinkling of an eye, no time to prepare. The last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Hallelujah. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up 
in victory. Hallelujah. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Because the dead will also be resurrected. The sting of death is sin and the law, strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 58. Therefore, the word therefore means in the light of the rapture. My beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always doing what? Always doing what? Always abiding, abiding, increasing in what? In the work of the Lord. Do you see here what the rapture will produce when you are? It grips your heart. When the coming of Christ actually grips our heart, it will inspire you to win souls for Christ. The work of Christ that is saying that you must abandon here is the work of soul winning. Preaching the love of Christ to people. The reason why many of us are not witnessing is because the coming of Christ has not gripped your heart. Always abandoning. You are always witnessing. The word abandoning means increasing. Your level of, of witnessing increases. The more you recognize Jesus is coming and can come anytime, you want many of your friends to come along. You will not keep short. They were telling one sister, they, she was traveling to Lagos. They wrote in the bus, nobody must preach here. She stood up and started preaching. They said, stop. She said, no, we must obey God rather than men. <laughs> God says we should preach. You are the one that says we should not preach. If you know what is coming, you will not tell me to keep my mouth shut. And another fellow from another religion said, please, Auntie Emma Zoroni, God divided them right away. And other people also say, in fact, I've been having questions. This is opportunity for me to ask it from you. Speak out. If you are not winning souls, brethren, you are not expecting his coming. Some of us are teachers. You can't talk to your students. Some of us are lecturers. You have never given a book to your head of department, who is an unbeliever, to other lecturers. Some of us are afraid to invite people to the church. I pray that we will not miss the rapture. It's a prerequisite. You can't just be do die in the church. You have no seal for the work of God. He said, therefore, look at the very words. Be steadfast. I don't have time to tell you the meaning of steadfastness. It's not witnessing today and not witnessing tomorrow. Be unmovable that nothing can stop you in witnessing. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. He said, be steadfast in the work of the Lord. Be unmovable in the work of God. Always abound. Diani. Some of you, when they give you tracks, they are, you drop it. Some of you drop the, the You are lost. You have to be involved. The seal or so many. The ministry of reconciliation becomes something that you take serious. You want your children to be saved. You want your uncle to be saved. You want your junior brother to be saved. You want you say, let's go to Bible study. Let's go. Because you want them to know the Lord. Your friends that you eat guguru and epa together. If you are a medical doctor, your patients are there. They are not hindering you. You know in this country, brethren, we may not have anything in this country, but we have God in Nigeria. Go to other nations. That's what they don't have. America, that's what they don't have. But in Nigeria, we have God. Ha! Hallelujah. Today, you will see thousands of people going to the church. Our problem is leadership. Even church leadership, not only political leadership. Our people go to church because they want to hear the word of God, but what they hear is law. Nobody is preaching Christ to them. But here you are. You have the genuine, authentic word of Christ. And many of us are still very, very docile. 
Some of us are even check out of work, the work, work, workers meeting. Say, I don't want to be a worker. There is nothing like that. You will miss the rapture. All those that have the blessed hope of his coming, they have seal. You will see seal for serving God. So you will see, he said, look, be steadfast, always abandon in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That is, it will be rewarded when the master comes. Praise God. I say praise God. Let me give you the five things and then we will close. Praise the Lord Jesus. So you see how the coming of Christ changes us. Changes every facet of our lives. When you know the Lord is coming. Do you know if everybody in Nigeria know that Jesus is coming? Eh? What is the time now? By one o'clock today. Don't you think all the beer parlor will be emptied? Eh? Some people that come to the church and paint their face like Shango. What will they go and do? They go and wipe everything. <laughs> Some people will remove their earring. Even though it doesn't mean salvation, they will go and say, They will like to do anything. If we can live in the light of his coming, huh, it will be so wonderful. Many of us will be making restitution. Kia, 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 kia. They brought him gossip, Lana, bro. Brother John, mo gossip la na ni pa yin e da kon e ma bi nu e do do bale you frustrate because you don't want to miss it i remember one of our children that they were warning look he, the way you are living your life you miss the rapture then in the night he had, he had a dream that the rapture came and then he missed the rapture so in the dream, he said, maybe God is doing it in badges. <laughs> he said, Jesus, when you are coming for the next badge, mention my name now. <laughs> you know, he's now in the expected hope of his coming. He was expecting, he said, the first badge has gone. I miss it. God, when you are coming, the second badge. The thing is not in badges. Once you miss it, you miss it. First Thessalonians chapter 4. The book of First Thessalonians chapter 4. I will read verse 15 to 17. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Look at verse 18. Wherefore, that is in the light of this scripture, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It's comfort. It brings comfort to us. When the coming of Christ grips your heart, it brings comfort. In the time of sorrow, when you lose a beloved one, when you, you lose your, your child, or you lose your husband, or you lose your wife, or you lose your mother, it brings comfort. Thank you for listening to our telecast. But are you really sure you are ready for the second coming of Christ? If not, and you do not want to partake 
of the terrible judgment and the great suffering that will come upon those that are left behind, you need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and become one of his ambassadors. If you are willing to do so, I want you to say this prayer after me as you put your hand upon your chest. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your great love for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross of Calvary for my sins so that I can receive forgiveness in my heart. I open the door of my heart to you today. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I pray that you will save my soul and you will help me to follow you to the end of my life. Thank you, Father, for doing so. Thank you because I am now your child. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and Amen.